Good morning, church. Welcome back to our study of Genesis together. Uh, today we're going to be looking at chapters 39 through 41. And this is a look at Joseph's life as he's brought into Egypt as a slave and, uh, and his rise to power. And so uh, this, this set of events stands in direct contrast to the chapter right beforehand, uh, which is a look at, at Judah's mor moral failure. And, uh, and so chapters 39 through 41 provide us with some details about how uh, God, through unimaginable events, uh, brings Joseph to power in Egypt, from slave to second in command over all of Egypt. And so we pick up in, in chapter 39, and we see it, as Joseph arrives into Egypt, he's bought by Potiphar, and Potiphar is the captain of the guard. And, and so the Lord is with Joseph, and, and Joseph finds success in everything that he does, and Potiphar notices this and puts him in charge over all of his household. And, and you think, oh, Joseph is, is finally, you know, having a, a stroke of good luck here, and, uh, and then everything uh, turns around, and, and Potiphar's wife makes some unwanted advances on him, and, uh, and he finds himself thrown into prison. And so uh, you can't help but wonder here why on earth God seemingly ignores Joseph's faithfulness and righteousness, right? He did the right thing. Isn't obedience supposed to be rewarded and not punished? And, uh, and so then we pick up in chapter 40, and uh, Joseph is in jail. And once again, he's, he finds himself in charge. And he, this time he's over the prisoners. The rest of the prisoners are under his his care, and so uh, the Lord is with Joseph yet again. And so uh, he ends up interpreting the dreams of a couple of uh, Pharaoh's officials, the, the cupbearer and the chief baker, and the cupbearer is restored to power, or to his position, and, and the, the chief baker is, is hanged, just as Joseph predicted uh, from their dreams. And so uh, Joseph is, of course, hoping that the cupbearer will remember him when he's restored into his position, but uh, the cupbearer forgets him, and it kind of seems like maybe God did too. And, and so he finds himself s still in prison. And, uh, and then we pick up in chapter 41, and, and we finally see what God has been leading Joseph to this entire time. Right? We see the story become clear, and God's purpose is realized, and, and so Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dreams and, and tells him that there's going to be seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine. And, um, and he ends up being put into a position of power. And he, uh, he is put in second command over all of Egypt. And he begins to oversee over the next seven years the, uh, the storing up of grain in Egypt. And what this does is it actually uh, not only saves Egypt from the famine that's coming, but it saves the entire world, um, it, which includes his father and his brothers. And, uh, and so this is a very interesting story as we see the, the progression of Joseph coming from slave to second in command over all of Egypt. And so there's a lot that we can learn from this. And throughout the whole story, Joseph is blessed because of God's presence with him. And it's important for us to note, though, that God's presence is with Joseph unmistakably because, uh, because of Joseph's commitment to the Lord. And so if we want God's presence in our lives, then we have to commit ourselves to the Lord. We have to trust him to guide our lives. And uh, even when we can't see where he's taking us or how we might get there, uh, it would have been very easy for Joseph to give up or to give in to temptation, uh, but he stayed faithful to the Lord even in the midst of increasingly difficult circumstances. And, uh, and so these events give us some insight into uh, the age-old question, why bad things happen to good people, right? Joseph it, here is pictured as a godly man. He's righteous. He's faithful to God. But he experiences a string of events that to some would seem to be just about the worst luck you could possibly have. Um, and so we're able to see, though, through, uh, through a bigger picture that God was orchestrating a miraculous rise to power for Joseph. And, uh, and so Joseph went through a period of suffering, uh, but it led to a lifetime of blessing. 
And that blessing was far greater than anything he could have asked for, or imagined, or even anticipated. And, and so we see that God is able to use even the most difficult of circumstances to bless us and to bring glory to his name. And so uh, as we close today, I hope that this passage is a reminder to you that we must remain committed to the Lord, dwell in his presence, and trust in him.